ventured out onto Crammond Island. Like, yeah, Crammond Island. It's actually the first time I've ever been here, which is quite shocking considering Sarah and I were coming down here for most of my Sunday night cardio walks up till when the weather got crappy. But yeah, nearly fell my ass as we were walking out a couple of times, but that's what happens when you're walking on a wet stone in skate shoes. <laughs> um, but yeah, back to the bodybuilding chat, so prep. Truth be told, this is the first prep I've never cheated on my diet on. I've not missed a single, the, the only meal I have missed is one steak meal. It was post Bournemouth show when I was dealing with some GI distress. I think it was that Tuesday night when it was the absolute worst. Coming home in the car, I was burping and it smelled like actual acid. I had my post-workout meal, I, I think I, I like, I don't even think it was what I was meant to have. I think I just made up the carbs in like a banana to help with my stomach. And then I just didn't. I, I remember Sarah made my, my steak meal and I think I had like, out of the 250 grams of steak I was meant to have, I think I had like 50 grams of it. And I love steak. Anyone that knows me knows I like my steak. So for, for me to not eat steak when I'm eating 70 grams of carbs a day, you know it's bad. But every prep has its, has its hiccups. Every prep is different. I've been, do I've been doing this since I was 16, so I'm 25 now, which is, I still feel like that 16 year old kid that got into this sport to see if I could do it. Um, Competed in 2013 uh, as a junior. I was talking to Andy about this yesterday and I've always been told every single time I've prepped, you've got loads of potential, you've got the shape there, you've got the, the, you've got the structure, you've got the nice lines, you just need to be bigger, you just need to be bigger. So as soon as I started getting bigger, then when I started competing, it was more of a, you've missed your peak, your condition's off, you need to nail your condition. So 2018, I finally nailed that condition at the Cumbrian show and then at the finals. And then I've obviously been plagued with tanning issues. Um, I'm a typical white Scottish man. I'm milky white and my skin is always really, really dry. And I never take the uh, skin prep serious enough. So when it comes to using actual tanning services like ProTan and such, um, liquid sun rays. And this isn't a knock on the tanners, um, it's more of a knock on myself and my lack. The lackluster effort I have put into exfoliating my skin uh, and moisturising purely because I don't fucking like it. it I, it's very toxic masculinity, I just feel like a bit of a girl <laughs> when I'm in the shower. When I'm in the shower for 30 minutes exfoliating every part of my body and moisturising. Um, this show um, I'll be using Dream Tan and I'll be getting a spray tan, I think on the Wednesday, all over. So if anyone sees me next Wednesday, depending on when this vlog gets put out, that's, when I'm go that's why I'm tanned. Um, and then I'll just get one of the boys backstage to tan me up with the Dream Tan, so that won't be an issue. But this, back to kind of what I was chatting about, this, this prep's been an absolute bloody eye-opener. I, I think everyone that gets into bodybuilding, when they really get into it, they think they're nailing everything. Because in a... Bodyboarding is a very, very subjective sport and anyone that competes in bodyboarding and is serious about bodyboarding and has been about it for a long time will tell you, you can't control who turns up on the day, all you can control is what you can do. And if we break that down, the, the amount of progress you can make in a day in bodybuilding is frightening because of that. Like it's not like many other sports where like it's a team game and a lot of it comes down to the effort on the day and the skill level. The, the skill in bodybuilding is the ability to just adhere. That's it, like the, obviously there's a skill to training hard and there's a skill to certain things like little diet hacks and things like that. But if you look at what I'm doing, I'm eating food. You don't need, you do not need skill to open your mouth and chew, chew food. You do not need skill to let some beat around the bush inject yourself with performance enhancing drugs. You do not need skill to rest I love resting. Who doesn't like having a chill day sitting on the sofa? That's what I, that's what I do when I'm resting. I, I sit, sit on the sofa, play Xbox, and binge watch TV. Name any other. You'll be hard pressed to find any bodybuilder that isn't uh, got some um, obsession with films or, or TVs, TV shows. Every, every bodybuilder I've spoken to this prep, they've all binged to different shows. So when I finish a show, I'll message one of them and be like, right, what have you been watching? Tell me what you've been watching. There's, there's very little skill and the actual tasks you've got to do for bodybuilding. The skill is the, the adherence, the skill is the dedication to it. The skill is the discipline in doing doing the do. But there's a lot you can do in a day of bodybuilding. There's your meal prep, there's your cardio, there's your injections, 
there's taking your health supplements, getting in your water, and more, or it's it's 11, and that's my fourth litre of the day. Um, getting in your sodium intake, this is something, again, I thought didn't really make a dif difference, which is shocking now that Andy explained it to me. Um, that's why I think I'll be bringing such a jaw-dropping package next Saturday. There's training, and then there's resting. Like, there's, there's a lot you can do in a day, but again, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say bodybuilding's a skill-based sport if you want to call it that. It's a it's a dedication-based sport because the ones that they go to the top, they're not just there because of the genetics or the work ethic. They're there because they've just endured. Bodybuilding is a matter of endurance. Most like the Olympias this weekend, most of these guys, they're at the absolute peak, and they've been training for eight to ten plus years. Like they, they maybe turn pro within three years of their training. But when they get into their peak, it's 10 years in. It's 12 years in, 15 years in. So it fills me with, it, with like so much excitement and giddy excitement. The fact that I'm like getting to that spot where I'm like, right, this is when I've got my routine in place. My, my motivation to do this has never been more clear. My, the financial side of it, because bodybuilding is bloody damn expensive. The financial side of it, everything, and my coaching, I love my job massively. All of that's in place. All my bodybuilding ducks are in, in a line. So now going forward, finishing out this prep and then going into the off season, I've never been happier and I've never been more excited in my life before. And it very, very is much my life. And some people may think that's restrictive. Some people might think that's sad. But the way I was raised, like my mom raised me to, my, mom's, my mom was self-employed. And my dad, on the other side of that coin, my dad hated his job. My dad worked a job he absolutely hated for years and years and years and everything every time i'd hear my dad talk about a job his job it would always be negative so when i got to 15 16 when i com competed and i was like right i can sit in there like how can i make bodybuilding worth my while when it comes to a job because i was still i think i was in fourth fourth year going into fifth year after i competed and i quickly went from being wanting to become an architect to wanting to become a pt which is a very, very drastic change, especially in terms of subjects you're going to study. So I went from studying maths, physics, and things like that, and graphics, to doing cooking, because my mom explained to me, well, if you're gonna eat all this food, you should know how to cook. So I remember taking hospitality. PE and then higher English, because I was that clear set in my goals. at six, And at 16, like, when I speak to like 18 year olds now, <laughs> and I'm like, what do you wanna do with your life? They're like, I don't have a fucking clue. And throughout my years, when I've been coming up as a PT, at PT, the PT guys double my age, and they, they they tell me how refreshing and how how different I am, how motivational I'm, whatever the how you want to call it. That at such a young age, I had such a clear set goal in what I wanted to do. I've never thought much of it because I'm just me. I'm nothing special. I'm just doing what I want to do. But at 16, for me to sit down with my mother after competing, and for us to almost set out a 10-year plan to allow me to do this. Now looking back at that end of that 10 year plan, I've never been, <laughs> I've never realized the like, the the grandness of it, the, the, I can't think of the word. I've never been able to truly realize how rare that is at 16. To, to literally be like, this is what I'm gonna do in my life. This is how, how I'm gonna achieve it. I don't know how I'm gonna get there, but this is how I'm going to try to get there. This is my route. This is my end goal, let's go. And since I was, I was 16, 17, that's been it, bodybuilding's been it. Like to put into perspective, like I've been on one lad's holiday and that was the end of my high school uh, years. Um, and then since then, if you're to add up all the nights out I've been out since I was 18, it's probably less than a month of days out drinking or nights out drinking. Purely in Edinburgh, I've been out drinking, piss drunk twice and I've lived in Edinburgh since I was 19. In terms of going back to people's and getting pissed with the boys, once a year at Christmas, since I was 19. That's how driven I have been at a goal I set when I was 16. And it, the reason I keep talking about when I was 16 is because at 16, I was like, right, by the time I'm 25, I've done this, this, and this, and this, and then I'll set my next 10 years. And, and that's why I'm excited because what I thought I would be achieving in the next 10 years, I'm looking to achieve in five, probably less than that. And Andy confirmed that on our call. So that's why I'm so ecstatic because I'm now finally where I want to be. And 
there's a quote I've seen often that says, five years of hard work will get you nowhere or we'll see, maybe see you get nowhere and then within six months, all of a sudden you're boom, exactly where you want to be. And that's what it's felt like. It's felt like up to, kind of when we did our first vlog last year, our first promo, around about this time last year, I've been banging away, banging away, banging away. And then it's slowly since last October, a little bit, but mainly since April, everything's just went like, it's felt like it's been this steady gradual increase, very, very slow. And then as soon as April hit of 2021 this year, it just went like that. And Andy and I have set myself up with a plan in place that is going to ramp that up even more. So yeah, it's been, this prep's been fucking eye-opening. There's so many things I've learned. I feel like I'm back to that 16-year-old kid running around a gym, just excited to lift weights. And that's what's all, it's what it's been about for me since I started lifting weights. Like when I was 14, my mum got me a 30 pound 30, like, as in pounds, as in, like, currency, not weight. Um, a 30-pound dumbbell set from Argos. It had a 1.1 kilo dumbbell, a 2.2, and a 4.4. And to put into perspective, this litre bottle would be one kilo. And I couldn't do that with it. Like, I remember my sister's boyfriend at the time, whoever that may have been, come around a couple of days after I got the weights. And I'd been, like, lifting away, and my mum was shouting at me for training more than a day consecutively. And I go to someone, I was like, can you lift a four kilo dumbbell? I went, like... Four kilos, nothing. That's what like your granny uses at the little aerobics pump class. And I physically struggle to lift it off of the floor, like to do a bicep curl or to do anything that you would do with it. Like I, I could lift it up off the floor, but that would be it. And I remember him holding it out like that. And I was like, holy shit, he's strong as fuck. And it just makes me like, just laugh because I like, when people see photos of me when I was on stage, that was after two years of lifting weights in my, like a year, a six month solid of lifting weights in my room. And then lifting, going to the gym three days a week, um, not training very smart or well, but still lifting weights for about 18 months. So like when people see that photo I posted most recently of the uh, of me at the NABA Scotland, and I'm kind of just standing like a deer in the headlights, skinny and tan, you know, staring into space. That wasn't my starting point. That wasn't that wasn't my blank canvas. I'd been painting away on my blank canvas for a good two years by then. And that kind of ties into like what else I want to talk about. Like when people talk about like they can't achieve this for whatever reason, or they can't achieve that, or it's too hard, or they've got mental barriers. Just do it. When you're a young kid, for example, when you when you when you were young skating, you wouldn't yeah you wouldn't think oh I can't do that ollie I can't do it. I see Tony Hawk doing that. I can't do that. When you're a little kid, you don't you don't have because you. you You've not been on the planet long enough, so you don't have these like massive mental barriers of self-doubt and all these other insecurities. So when you're a little kid, for example, how many little kids like would jump off of that rock onto the grass without any hesitation? As soon as you're a little kid, you just you don't have that yeah you, idea of consequence or like danger or, or or doubt. So you just do it. And I think because I got into lifting weights right on the cusp of when that would end at 14, and just got into the habit of like what well, I just want to do it, so I did it. That set me up, not just for my bodybuilding, but for my life. For like, even after bodybuilding's done, like when I just want to focus on business and family, it's so damn fucking, you know, I just look back and just very, very proud of myself, really. Um, because no matter what it is, whether you're, whether you look up to like someone like Cristiano Ronaldo, who's multi-millionaire, beyond uber famous footballer, or insert anyone, like, I'm not exactly his biggest fan, but like Mark Zuckerberg, people like that, The Rock, they will have just been a, doing what they wanted to do, and that's it. They there wouldn't have been, well, I can't speak on their behalf, but of my thought process, there wouldn't be very much of a, I'm going to do this to make all this money. They're like, no, they were, they were doing that because they wanted to do it. That's why they're successful. There was no other, there was no ulterior motive. They did it out of pure, basic, I want to do that, so I'm going to do that. And that's what I've done since I was 16 with bodybuilding. It's ruined relationships. I've went months on end in, in, in times not speaking to my own mum because I've been so bloody fucking stubborn. I've lost girlfriends. But it's part of the process. It's part of what's gotten to me to this position. Every, and it's, again, this ties into like my why. I posted a video on this on my Facebook group. Shameless plug if you want coaching. But I was speaking about my why and how it's changed over the years. And 
the biggest thing is I will never lose that little kid's mentality of I just want to do it because it's fun and I fucking love it and that will never change but to the extent that like now I've built up myself as a business to the extent that I can pay for gas to come out here to Crammond with me stand in the rain and listen to me fucking drone on like to me that's surreal like I came from a shitty little town in the Scottish borders and it was fucking filled filled with people set that said they were going to do this and they're going to do that and they're going to achieve this and they're going to do that and they're going to go off to uni fucking lot of them would come have came out of uni and if any of you are watching this you can hate me for all you want you're all doing very little in terms of what you said you were going to do when you're 16. and i remember going to the gym when i was 16 and being surrounded by guys saying what ifs like oh i would have been playing for hibs if i hadn't blown out my ankle or i would have been playing for scotland or so and so would have been playing scottish rugby if he didn't blow out his knee and I remember when I was saying, I remember t- t- telling myself at 16, I was like, I'm not going to be one of those what ifs. I'm going to give it as much as I fucking can for as long as I can. I'm going to go as hard as I can until I burn out or until till something happens. And I'm, nine years later, I'm still going and I'm building up speed and I'm building up momentum. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's surreal. I never thought I'd get to the place I'm in now. It's... Uh, it's a weird, it's a weird feel, and there's there's that Matthew McConaughey speech about his um, his hero, and he talks about his heroes himself in five years or ten years. He's never going to be his hero, but that's part of it, and I think that's been the biggest. Somewhat of that has been the biggest driver for myself is always looking ahead to what's next. Whether it's like we're just walking up and we're, we're planning the next year's worth of content that Gaz and I are going to be doing for the YouTube almost down to like what we'll post on specific dates. I've planned out my off seasons to the date, to the extent I know what I'll be doing on April 10th next year regarding my, whether I'm going to be in an off season phase when I'm pushing food hard and training, like, training my arse off or if I'm going to be in a cruise phase, literally to the date. And again, like a lot of people think, oh, well, that's obsessive. I'm like, well, you're damn fucking right it's obsessive. This is the one thing that's been a constant in my life since I was 16. I've committed nine years of this of my life to this it pays for every single thing you see these new shoes i've got my hat the man behind the camera my juice my watch my phone bill my bills pays for everything if i didn't if i didn't start lifting weights when i was 14 i don't know what the fuck would be literally don't know what i'd be doing so it makes me laugh when people are like oh but that's obsessive that's restrictive i'm like well yeah but I'm 25 and I'm bringing in what most people would dream to bring in financially. Doesn't feel like I do a day's day's worth of work ever. I'll take that for being obsessive. That's a decent trade-off for me. Um, But in terms of the prep, just to be told, I don't feel like I've actually spent six months dieting because I've loved every second of it. Like I've said this to you a couple of times, the only part of a bodybuilding prep I don't like is the exfoliating and the moisturizing, but that's because, again, I'm a pig-headed, stubborn, white, metrosexual male. It's part of the uh, it's part of the club we're in. You're not allowed in if you moisturise, and you have to eat steak rare, and you have to have some ar- some, some 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 anger issues and like heavy metal. That's that's the requirements. If people watch that and they don't see the sarcasm, that would be really bad. <laughs> but yeah, this prep's been fucking so fun. Like, I'm that excited for bodybuilding and from my off season to start, but I'm also really sad that it's coming to an end. Like, just to speak on next weekend, my mum and my stepdad are gonna be there, my girlfriend's gonna be there, my coach and his missus are gonna be there, and then the gym I've been training at, Flex Unit, which, shout out to Flex Unit, the the, the guy, the owner, Brad, and the, the kind of core unit that are training there, like, the last time I felt part of that type of community, gym feel, was when I was 16. And this mindset and buzz and love I've refound, that gym's a huge part of that. The, the, my mindset shifting since that last Bournemouth show, Flex Unit's been a huge part of that. So, like, been fucking invaluable. The kit that guy gets in all the time is phenomenal. The atmosphere, shout out to my training partner, Dylan, my client. Watch out for him next year. He's going to be dangerous in the first timers class. They're a big catalyst as to why I'm 
I've been, I, I am so positive and excited about my bodybuilding. But the whole flex unit, like family or some thereof, are coming down. So even like, I was literally thinking that this yesterday night, this morning, like, obviously I'm going to fucking win my class, and I'd love to win the overall because I like the idea of the like symmetry of the last time someone won it was Andy, my coach. And I'd love to keep it in the uh, the AMS coaching team. But there's some big boys competing in the medium class and there's some big boys competing in the tall class. So I'm not deluded to the challenge. But take away the take away the actual competitive side of it. I'm just fucking excited for that weekend. It's going to be one of the most exciting, enjoyable weekends probably of my life. I get to I get to spend time with some very, very, very close friends. The day after, Andy and Regan are taking us out for brunch, which I'm looking forward to. And then Sarah and I, the Monday to the Saturday, the Sunday after the show, we're taking a week's holiday down south and we're going to eat some good food and train in some fun gyms and just chill. Because that woman is, like the shit she's put up with and like signed on for, that there's a reason I'm getting emotional. <laughs> is like no, no normal woman moves in with a guy when he's dieting and just does everything without complaint, without without kicking up a fuss and just, just cracks on. She's been the biggest... Christ, I'm emotional. Um, it's a good thing it's raining. Yeah. <laughs> so she's been an absolute fucking godsend. Like, as much as this prep hasn't felt tough mentally, if you take Sarah out of the equation, that changes. Whether it be simple things of when I'm coming home from cardio and I message her being like, babe, can you see some mistake? Or going on my walks and just listen and just having me vent. Or when I'm just being an absolute moody prick. <laughs> she touches my calf on the sofa and I tell her to fuck off. She's put up with so much. So, she's um, she's amazing. In short, like obviously she baked, she's got her thick and fat cookies. Shameless plug. And there's been quite a few people that have been like, "Oh, how are you dieting while she's baking all this stuff? How are you doing this? How are you doing that?" I'm like, the shit she's putting up with me <laughs> since we moved in. I was like, for me to deal with some some smells that are god fucking like just thinking about it makes my mouth water. If I got to deal with that when I'm on a diet, that's not that bad. But yeah, it's been. It's been a really, really, really fucking good six months. It's been hard, it's been challenging. There's been one day I felt like packing it in, but it's not because of the bodybuilding. It's, again, been due to the um, the stomach issues and the, like, I'm aware of the the risks that I put and take, uh, the stress I put on my body and the risks I take due to the drugs I use. Um, and, and due to what was going on with my liver, with the wind straw, that was the only reason, or the anavar, that was the only reason I was like, I can't keep doing this because, again, it's purely a health reason. But everything's fine, and I will be fine. It's part of the game, sadly. But yeah, it's been a, it's been a fucking good prep. I'm excited to wrap it up. I'm excited for next weekend. This is the first time I've ever been more excited to see how I look on stage than for food, because, like, honestly, if Andy told me for the next three week, for the next seven days, eight, eight days. For the next eight days, I want you to eat one string bean and smell some chicken and eat two pieces of prawns a day, I'd fucking do it. Like that's, that's where my mindset is and going into the off season, that's a dangerous mindset to have because the progress I plan to make is gonna sh shut a lot of people up and shock a lot of people come our next flock prep series. <laughs> On that, it's getting wet and I'm training uh, 12, so we'll call it a day. Oh!